I honestly believe that this is one of the first things that you should learn as a Godot beginner once you've mastered the basics of the engine. Alrighty, it's another devlog with some progress on my game so far and also some tips for my fellow Godinsky developers. It has been a few weeks since I've last showed you the progress on my 2.5D platformer featuring this little fella. We have moved from a very basic prototype with simple shapes and a moving camera to a setup that lets me add a 2D background, a middle background and 3D objects and sprites in the main area of the game. And while my character could run and jump, I still needed to figure out how to make the combat work. So that's what I set out to tackle next. I had already envisioned the move set. It was a mix between Super Smash Brothers and the classic beat em up games. With the weekend ahead, I knew what I had to do. Create my first combat system with my minimal programming skills. After a long day of work, I had something functional. But every time when I tried to add a new move, two others would break. I ended up with massive functions in one code file to handle all movement on the ground, in the air, while moving, while standing still, and don't even get me started on managing the actual sprite animations. If your logic code is starting to look like a tangled mess of spaghetti code, where you are checking multiple states just to add another if statement inside, then something's wrong. And some would say that if it works, it works, it doesn't matter, but yeah, that only goes to a certain extent. At some point, you cannot add more logic to an already mess of a code. Let's just put it like that, that I didn't have a good day. I was so annoyed. I literally had nightmares that night, and I'm not sure if you guys ever had them, but I was stuck in some sort of if statement loop um, in my nightmare. And it, it had to do with like real life situations. It was like a living hell. <laughs> so the next day I realized that I couldn't rely on the monkey brain alone. And I did some research on how smart people would handle like game character states. And that's when I discovered state machines. When you are creating a game, especially a platformer, your character will likely have different states like running, jumping or attacking. When your character is running, it is allowed to jump. And when it's jumping, it can only fall, for example. You could manage all of this with a bunch of if statements, checking what state the character is in or is not in, and then run the specific code. But as your game grows, this can get really messy and hard to keep track of. This is where a state machine comes in handy. Instead of cramming everything into a big script, a state machine lets you break things down into separate, clear scripts for each state. So when your character is running, only the code related to running is active. When the character switches to jumping, the game automatically swaps out the running code for the jumping code. This approach keeps your scripts much more organized and easier to understand because each script only deals with the functions and behaviors that are specific to that particular state. It makes your code cleaner, but more importantly, it also makes it more maintainable. You can easily add different logic along the way as your game grows. I honestly believe that this is one of the first things that you should learn as a Godot beginner once you've mastered the basics of the engine. Learning the fundamentals of object-oriented programming where specific code can independently function in its own state without interfering with the rest is a game changer. Once you grasp this concept, it will influence everything you program from that point onward. I'll be sharing a few helpful videos in the pinned comment and the description of this video that you should check out next. And while this video isn't necessarily a tutorial video, I will show you how I roughly implemented the state machine to make the combat work. All right, let's just go straight to the debug mode of the current build. I also just upgraded to the newest version of Godot and surprisingly enough, most of the things didn't break down. Only the water mesh I had to fix. I'm not completely sure what you guys on YouTube saw last time because I'm also regularly showing things on Discord. If you want to join, the link is also in the description of this video. But this is the current build. Let me just go ahead and kill a bunch of crabs. Yeah, so that, that's basically it. That's the video. Thank you for watching. <laughs>
No, I can I can sh I can talk about a few things to be honest. Um, I think in the last build I already had the movement working, but since I found out how the state machine uh, worked, I was able to optimize the whole the whole movement system, and it's now way more fluent. It doesn't have the bugs that it had earlier. I could add all the little effects, the dust effects, way easier. Something that I really like, and you have to pay very close attention to the um, to the character, but the moment the character lands and starts to run immediately, it goes into this little land while running animation. Look. See? Like it's doing this little duck. And then it still runs. That's like a detail that I'm very proud of. And it was so easy to do with the state machine. There's also a landing animation when you just land from an idle point of view. See? It's just skidding animation. There's another detail that I really like, because this game isn't just about fighting. There's also lots of dialogue and friendly NPCs, and I don't want the character to be like uh, aggressive constantly. But I also don't want it to look like this uh, when it just fought a, 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 an enemy. So I have this aggressive mode, whenever you fight, it will go into this aggressive stance for just a couple of seconds. And then when there's no danger around, it will go back to the more friendly posture. I also redid the running animation, I wasn't happy with it at all. I think the character didn't really look like the same character when I was running. While it is an improvement, I'm still not happy about it. If you look at the feet, it's way too much glued to the floor. So a future running animation will bounce a bit more into the air. Also, any other animation is still a placeholder, and you can clearly see when I do, for example, the forward air. And I really think it's like the optimal way to um, optimize your animations in an actual prototype. The real eye-opening moment was how fast I was able to create a combo system compared to the system that I built based on my spaghetti code. Because in the earlier version, there was like this punch logic within every other code and it had to check like different windows of when you were able to combo together with checking if you were crouching, jumping, not in idle, everything broke down. <laughs> and with the state machine, it was simply a matter of when you're attacking during a attack state, you go to attack two. And when you're attacking during a attack two state, you go to attack three. It's so easy. It's a very small pieces of logic within a punch state. So yeah, a idle state, a punch one, two, and three state. Then you go into a aggressive um, uh, idle animation. There is a jump and a fall state. And I took those two separate because then you can have also a fall state without jumping by just walking off a platform like this. Looks very cool. Oh, I totally forgot about two states. There's a crouching state. <laughs> you go into a shell. And there's also a crouch out or shield out state. I'm not sure how I called it. What a little animation that takes care of um, getting out of your shield. And there's the uppercut. Boom, boom, boom. Very cool. I really like it. And now we are going into a really nerdy territory uh, for any Super Smash Brothers fan. But I specifically like the back air of uh, many characters in the most recent game, uh, especially Sonic. Sonic has like the most satisfying back air. It's like this one. It feels so powerful. When he's doing the kick, it also does a little spin. You can see it way better when you're on a platform. And now to get even more nerdy, you can also do a reversed back hair that looks something like this. It's basically you running, turning, immediately dump, jumping, and then do the attack. Therefore, you still have the forward momentum and you basically do a back air while going forward. It's a reversed back air. It will be the most powerful move in the game, but also one of the most difficult ones to pull off. While I'm still working on the details on how the combat should work, um, roughly speaking, I think the crouching will only be for things that are falling from the sky, for one-time attacks from enemies or the environment. It won't be useful for multiple combos from the enemies because I will make it so that the shield breaks. Not literally, that will be very, very uh, gory, <laughs> having a turtle without a shield, but it will break out of its shielding animation and it will go into this staggering state, which makes you very vulnerable for follow-up attacks. The explosion effect won't stay, that's just temporarily, because the combo system, the one, two, three hit, will make it so the enemy gets staggered. 
And from the staggered state, you can launch enemies in the sky. And you can, for example, combo into a back air. I really want to make it so that you won't be able to uh, abuse one attack just to spam it over and over again. While the uppercut is very strong, it won't work at enemies that aren't staggered because it's a very slow attack and any enemy will see it coming. So the moment you press the uppercut, they will just block. So I really want to make it so that every move has its benefits in a specific situation. Uh, nothing is final, obviously, especially the animations, as you can tell, they are very rough. Um, but I just really wanted to work on the uh, on the combat and especially the back air this move ah oh, it's just so satisfying to pull off <laughs> like I said earlier this is not going to be a in-depth tutorial on how to implement the state machine I am thinking about making my own tutorial because I made quite some adjustments to make it work for a, a game like Aiden Jr uh, so make sure to subscribe if you want to see that one but with that out of the way, let's take a look at the setup. So again, we are now looking at the player scene. And right over here is the state machine. So within this state machine node, uh, you will find the, all the different states as like child nodes. I really agree with Shaggy that this is the most Godot way to go about this thing. Because this is basically Godot's philosophy, having nodes in nodes. And if you go through all the state nodes uh, within the movement state machine, you will see in the right sidebar that all the properties change. So these are basically the sibling states that the selected state right over here, in this case the idle state, can access and also can return. And by returning a state, it will basically swap itself with the next state. It's probably better if I show you in code. So right over here you have the variables that you can um, uh, set in the sidebar. This is the enter function, a function that only gets fired once, once the state gets active. And in the process input function, you can define to which input the game should listen while being in this specific state. In this case, when you are in the idle state, you can jump, you can move, you can crouch, you can attack, and you can do an uppercut. And that's why it is so easy to exclude code in a specific uh, state. I can simply just delete this and the character can no longer crouch, jump and punch. And then you have the process physics uh, function. It applies the gravity and some very basic functionality to go about the aggressive idle state and the uh, default idle state. Normally you don't have to do this by the way, uh, having to play specific animations uh, in the code itself that belongs to a specific state because you can just uh, put the animation name as a property. Uh, but in this case, uh, I have two separate idle animations, the aggressive one and the normal one. And I didn't feel like making that a separate um, uh, state because there's no other logic to it. And that is actually what it's all about with the state machine. You are connecting, chaining different states depending on input or any other logic by simply returning a state in the current state's code. For example, if you listen to the uh, get jump uh, input, you can return the jump state. So the get jump state will get loaded. Uh, it will also play the animation that is set right here in the properties. And then you will have the different logic that only belongs to the jump. For example, if you also press attack during the process input of the jump state and the direction has a specific match, then in my game, the character will do a backward uh, air attack or a uh, forward air attack or a uh, neutral air attack. But as you can see, the code file is not ridiculously long. And if you compare that with my old code, code file, it literally has everything that belongs to the player in one big file. And it really gets messy. Right over here, I'm listening to animation states. I am also playing the animation. I'm setting properties. In this if statement is another if statement, then there's an else with an if in an if. <laughs> there's an else with even another if in it. It's yeah, you know, it's really duct tape, spaghetti code. Um, and it kind of worked at the beginning, but after a while it was simply impossible for me to um, implement the combo system because it got so messy. Speaking about the combo system, that's actually very easy right now. In the idle animation, uh, right over here. I simply listen to the get attack input and if that returns true, I return the punch one state 
if you press attack another time within a certain combo window, uh, I simply return the punch to state and so on. Yeah, I think the combo system really showed me the power of the state machine. So on Saturday, I think I worked four hours on the combo system uh, without success. Uh, and on Sunday, I made it work in just half an hour by implementing the state machine. But again, if you want to learn more about it, go and watch the Shaggy Devs video. And also subscribe because I'm going to make my own video that applies to a, a 2.5 3D game. So what's next, you might ask. Uh, I'm not completely sure. Um, I'm currently working on the art style. I want the um, platforms, the 3D objects, to look a bit more in line with the character. Uh, those are too far off currently. Uh, next in line would probably be the combat system. We need those crabs and those those bees to uh, to do some attacks and to fly and walk around in the world. And that's going to be a, a big challenge. I've I've never handled such such AI, so I'm pretty sure that's going to result in in similarly uh, interesting weekends, I suppose. <laughs> Make sure to like, subscribe, and I see you guys around in the next devlog. Bye bye. <laughs> Trying to record a video here. <laughs>